Okay, so let's, uh, let's continue with the class then. So, the next company we're going to, or just, uh, I had a question during the break time. Uh, it's, some students ask me a question during the break, that's good, it shows they're interested. But I'd also like if you ask me the question in front of the class, because the class can, can also benefit from the answer. Okay? So somebody asked me a question about beta again. So, with beta, what we're doing is, here we have the S&P 500 on this line. On this line we have Disney. We want beta is just the relationship. Do you understand relationship? Okay. The complicated way to say relationship is covariance of the variance, right? Covariance of the variance. That is what we're measuring. It's the relationship between Disney's and the S&P 500. So we calculate the returns for Disney every month, okay? Returns, relationship of what? Relationship of returns. Okay, so in December 2008, Disney's return is 4%. Okay, S&P 500 is 10%. I go to the graph, okay? Disney, this is Disney. Disney is up four, so Disney is here. Okay, S&P 500. S&P 500 is up 10. Okay, so the point is going to be here. I make a point here. Okay? Another point. Let's say we're doing this for five years, just randomly. March 2010. Disney is up 10%. Okay? S&P is up 5%. That's another point on this graph. Okay? So... Disney is up 10%, up to here. S&P is up 5%, so the point is going to be here. Okay? So we keep going, and we make a lot of different points. What we find is, when Disney is going up, S&P is going up. Okay? When Disney is going down, S&P is going down. Is there a relationship between S&P and Disney? Yes or no? Yes, yeah, so we're going to have a positive beta. Okay? It's a relationship. If there's no relationship, it's going to be zero. Okay, let's say that we have the video game company. Instead, we have EA Games. Okay, so EA. So, EA in December is minus 4%. S&P is plus 10%. Okay? So this is now EA. Do you know EA Sports? Yes? Is that your best friend? In the world? <laughs> so, anyway, the economy is going well, the S&P is up, people are working overtime in the evening, they don't have time to play video games, okay? So the video game stock price, the S&P 500 is up 10, but EA is down here, it's minus 4, okay? On the other side, uh, EA is plus 10, S&P is minus 5. The stock market is going down, the economy is in trouble. People have more free time, they're playing video games at home, by themselves, right? So S&P is here is minus 5, EA is plus 10. So we can find with the video game company, it looks like this. Is there a relationship between the S&P 500 and the video game company? Yes, there is a relationship, right? What kind of relationship? A negative relationship. It's going to be a negative beta. Okay? Is this stock adding risk or taking away risk from my portfolio? If I invest in the S&P 500, is this adding risk or taking away risk? This stock? It's taking away risk, right? Now here the S&P 500 is down. But guess what? My video game stock is up. So I'm even, right? It's taking away risk and it's taking away return. S&P 500 is up, but my video game stock is down, okay? So if I look at this stock, this stock is not going to be a high-risk stock, okay? Why? Because we assume I'm a diversified investor. We assume that I'm investing in the S&P 500, okay? So if this stock moves in the opposite way of the market, it's a low-risk stock. Then we have another stock, which has no relationship. We have a food stock. Okay, 
So we have a rice company. Let's just call it rice. Rice company. Okay. Rice company is just always up two percent, plus two percent every year. Okay. S and P 500 is plus ten or minus five. The rice company. S and P is plus ten. Rice company is plus two. S and P is minus five. Okay. Rice company is plus two. So there's no. We can make points like here. There is no relationship. Okay. So it's a zero. Beta is zero. There is no relationship between the food company and the S and P 500. Okay. So what if this regression? This is called a regression beta. Regression beta is putting points, data points, these are all data points, on a graph, okay, and figuring out, is there a relationship or no relationship? We can see this with our eyes, if there's a relationship or not, okay? But we need a computer software program to tell us the number, okay? So we use the computer software program, that tells us the number of beta, all right? So this... Regression beta has some standard error. It's not perfect because we don't have enough data points. There's some standard error. So we have to remember it's not a per regression beta is not perfect. There is some error. So we did the regression beta for uh, uh, Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank is one of the biggest banks in the world. We are comparing this against the DAX index. What country is the DAX, DAX from? DAX is from? Germany, okay? The DAX index just has 30 companies, only 30 companies, okay? Deutsche Bank is one of the main companies there. When we make an index, an index is weighted. What that means is the biggest company, we buy more stocks in the biggest company, and less stocks in the smaller company, okay? So, do we expect that Deutsche Bank will have a, a strong relationship with the market or not in Germany? Yes, right? First of all, it's only one of 30 stocks. Second, it's one of the, it's probably the biggest one of the 30, right? So if the Deutsch is going up, the DAX is probably going up and down. So we can see this. These are the points on the graph, okay? So we can draw the line and we can find out the beta is 1.4, okay? Banks are also affected by other companies and the economy. This is a bank. Uh, we can see that uh, high R squared, uh, alpha is minus 1.6%. <coughs> so, the reason that we have a high R squared for Deutsche Bank is that Deutsche Bank is just one uh, big company in an uh, index of 30 companies, okay? So, do you think that this beta is an uh, appropriate measure of risk? For Deutsche Bank, 1.69 or not? If not, why not? So we have to take from the eyes of another investor. Okay, so if I'm investing in German stocks, yes, it's an appropriate measure of risk. Right? Why? Because I'm not that well diversified. I invested in just 30 companies in Germany. Okay, so what is the risk that Deutsche Bank is adding or taking away to my portfolio, right? Deutsche Bank is moving with the German market a lot, right? And even more, so it's not taking away much risk from my portfolio, okay? However, if I'm a US investor, would I see things differently? What do you think? If I'm a German investor who's investing in just the DAX, or I'm a US investor who invests in the S&P 500. <clears throat> For which person is more risky to invest in Deutsche Bank? US. The German or the US investor? German. The German investor, why? Uh, because uh, he invests only in these DAX companies. And yes. his market uh, goes down, uh, his uh, stock uh, price also goes down. And for example, for US investors, it doesn't matter. It will be, for example, S&P 500 uh, 
going up, and if uh, DAX will go down. Okay, so if you were a U.S. investor, how would you measure the beta instead of comparing to the DAX? Where, what would you compare it to instead? Maybe the S&P 500 or global. If you're a global investor, you could invest compared to a global index, not just the DAX, right? So we can decide which index we are going to compare it against to get our regression. Okay. If I'm a German investor, only, she explained, only investing in the DAX, 30 companies in Germany, this is a risky stock for me. Okay? German economy has a problem, all the stocks go down. This one goes down even more because it's a bank, right? So the, the, all the companies have a problem, the bank is going to have an even bigger problem. Okay? It lends money to all the companies. Okay? So, however, if I'm a US investor, Okay, the German stock market goes down, but I still have my US stocks. Okay? So maybe overall it wasn't that bad. So this stock is not as risky for me as a US investor, as uh, for somebody who's only invested in Germany. So anyway, we should invest in uh, different, different uh, countries, right? So we can compare Deutsche Bank we can compare it to the DAX or the Euro, Euro or the MSCI uh, index. So we can try and compare these stocks to different uh, indexes. Okay. So the next one is Aracruz. Aracruz is a Brazilian company. So again, we stick in here Aracruz and we put in here the Brazilian index. Okay. And we can also do. Our cruise with the S&P 500 index. Okay, so here we did two different regressions. One with the Brazilian index, the beta is 0 0.99, and one with the U.S. index, the beta is 2.8. So, uh, we can decide depending on where we're invested we can decide which index to compare the stock to, okay, to get the beta. So where are we invested? So the, this is one way to calculate the beta, is the regression beta. But there's another way to calculate the beta, okay? So we're going to talk about that. So just this is just again, just the fundamentals of beta. Do you know Bulgari? What does Bulgari make? No? <laughs> Maybe some girls know better than the boys, right? Luxury goods. What kind of luxury goods? Bags. Bags, right? So if we compare Bulgari to the market, the beta is 2.45. Okay? So what is that telling us in English? That is telling us that this stock is moving more than the market. The S&P 500 goes up 5%, this stock goes up 10%. The S&P 500 goes down 5%, this stock can go down 10%. Does that make sense? The economy is going well, this company is going to make big profits, right? Bulgari, luxury company. The economy is not going well, they're going to make big losses. Okay, does that make sense? To people? Right? So it has a high beta, 2.45 risky. Beta between 1 and 2. GE, Microsoft. Okay? GE, very diversified company. It's going to move with the market the same way as the market. Right? GE is involved in electricity, in cars. Okay? Maybe it makes light bulbs. A lot of those things. So it's going to follow the market more closely. Microsoft, a little bit more risky. It's kind of a soft computer company, okay? Quest Communications, another type of software company. Beta of less than one. We have oil, oil uh, here, and we have cigarettes. Okay, do people stop by buying oil for their petrol for their car if the economy is going bad? Which are people going to stop buying first? Luxury handbags or petrol for their car? You're going to stop buying petrol, you like luxury handbags? 
Okay, so most people are, are going to continue to buy petrol. Okay? What about cigarettes? People who smoke, are they going to say, oh, the economy is bad, I'm going to stop smoking? Or are they addicted to cigarettes? With the nicotine. So like, even though the economy is bad, they still smoke. What? Which? My father does. My father smokes, still smokes, right? It's addictive, right? So people are still going to smoke even though the economy is bad. Okay? So this, this uh, uh, cigarette company, do you know Philip Morris? It's not going to move with the S&P 500 that much. Okay? So this is telling us its beta is less than 1. It's 0 0.60. It moves with the market, but not that much. Okay? Then we have a beta of less than 0. We have here gold mining. Gold mining company, negative beta. Okay? So, uh, people, uh, when they, gold often moves the opposite way of stocks. Why? Can anybody tell me why? Why does gold price move the opposite? No, actually nobody understands about gold, even top economists don't understand the reasons why gold price uh, takes different moves, right? It's very mysterious, even they did a lot of research. But just generally, why do you think, generally when the stock market is going up, the gold price is going down, and when the stock market is going down, the gold price is going up. Yes? Because people want to invest in something safe, in when the uh, price, stock of price go down. Yes, okay. So the stock market is going down, people are taking their money out of stocks, putting them in bonds, putting it in gold. Okay? What about when the stock market is going up? Are people keeping their money in gold? Taking their money out of gold. Okay? Uh, we can check the gold price. It's the opposite of the SP, right? If we go here, uh, on the, <laughs> the internet, we can put in the gold price. Okay? And uh, we'll see that usually the gold price. Graph is the opposite of the S and P. So gold is going up, but uh, so this is ten years for gold, right? So what was happening to the stock market in two thousand and eight? It's going down, right? So people start to buy gold, right? Now what's happening? The stock market is going up. People. Gold price went up to 1,800. Okay, now the stock market is going up. The gold price has gone down to 1,200. Big difference, right? What was the gold price in 2006? Just 600. Went up three times in price when there was the stock market crash. Everybody was investing in gold. Okay. So one way to invest in gold, you can buy the gold and, and keep it underground or keep it in the bank, right? Another way is to buy stock in a gold mining company. So, how many gold mining? Okay, just like video games. The stock, the S&P 500 is going up, the gold mining company is going down, right? The other way, it's a, it's a negative beta. So this is just talking about again, practically, about betas. So, we are going to look at the kind of things which affect the beta, okay? First one is the type of product. What type of product do you have? Okay, the industry. What industry are you in? The beta value depends on the sensitivity of demand. Do you understand sensitivity of demand? Yes? Do cigarettes have a high or low sensitivity of demand? Low. What about luxury handbags? High, okay. And also, uh, the it's cost to macroeconomic factors that affect the overall market. So cyclical companies have higher betas than non-cyclical firms. So we can hear this word cyclical. What cyclical means is uh, it's moving with the market. Okay? So these days we have talk about in economics that the government should be making more non-cyclical policies. It means when the economy is going well, Government should be putting on more control to slow down the economy, right? And then when the economy is doing badly, 
doing some uh, promotion. So firms which sell discretionary products will have higher pagers than firms that sell less discretionary products. Do you understand discretionary? What discretionary products do you buy? It means you only buy sometimes if you have money, but you don't usually buy. What kind of discretionary products do you buy? Hmm? Maybe for me, I'll buy a plant for my house if I have some extra money, right? Buy some nice plant for my house. Kind of discretionary product, not something I buy every day. What about you guys? What kind of discretionary products do you buy? Is soju a discretionary product or not discretionary? Very essential. Very essential. <laughs> so what is your discretionary product? Hair gel? Hmm? Makeup? Do you understand discretionary? Discretionary means I can live without it. Okay? So for students, cell phone. Is a cell phone discretionary? No, right? You need your cell phone. Okay? But it depends on the country. If you're living in uh, Ethiopia, maybe cell phone is a discretionary product. Okay? So if you sell discretionary products, you're going to have a higher beta than non-discretionary products. So discuss this with your partner. Phone service is non-discretionary in the United States, Western Europe, Japan, Korea, so on. However, in parts of Asia and Latin America, there are large segments of the population for which phone service is a luxury. So which of the following is true? Emerging market telecom companies should have higher betas than developed market telecom companies, or developed market telecom companies should have higher betas than emerging markets, or the betas should be the same. So discuss with your partner. Because the phone is more like a luxury product just in that country, right? Discretionary product. So the economy goes bad in that country, people will stop using phones. Okay? So higher risk. Okay, so then uh, uh, let's finish there for today. Just uh, the midterm exam is in a uh, two hour class, so two weeks later, right? To our class. I'll talk about more in the next class, but remember we have the book. You can read the book here, can help you with your project too. Okay.